All hey right, guys. Uh, well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it's Two Nine Marine here. I got a Marine who just graduated boot camp, and just this last week, and he wanted to come on and tell you about his time, and he also spent some time in kind of like the medical rehabilitation platoon, and uh, I figured it'd be good good chance for you guys to learn a little bit about that. Should you get sick or hurt in boot camp, and you have to go as well. So here it is. All right. Well. Uh... What's up, YouTubers? Um, doing this interview for uh, Two Nine Marine here. Uh, about five and a half months ago, or so I first hit him up and you know wanted to do an interview so I could put my knowledge out for you guys. Um, well, I'm I'm for I'm Private First Class Ard. I just graduated on March 11th. Uh, I actually shipped out October 19th, and that's when my training was supposed to start. And I was actually supposed to graduate January 15th. Um, I started off, you know, it was the whole receiving week, it was, it was kind of lame, to be honest. Uh, you're <laughs> up, long hours, you're eating box towels, which are the worst. You, got, <laughs> yeah. you get no sleep. Uh, the drill instructors, or your receiving drill instructors, are just, just yelling, at the, yelling at you the whole time, correcting everything you do, you know, like they should. Um, start getting all your, your camis, uh, your deserts, your woodlands, you know, your covers. Uh, get your boots, you know, all that good stuff. If you get all your uniforms, uh, well, not, well, you don't get your uniforms. That's, that's training day 24 or 26. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, just, just long hours. Uh, you don't really get IT, Jeff. I mean, they, they might tell you to run back and forth or, you know, something crazy. Uh, so, uh, for me, they're teaching you how to march for the first time with the whole, uh, you know, forward, march, uh, left, right, left. Uh, if, if you've been to boot camp, you know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so after that, you know, after your whole forming week, mm -hmm. you, uh, you get your drill instructors that, that Saturday. They call it Black Friday, but it always ends up on a Saturday for some reason. So yeah, I've right. Heard. My, <laughs> yeah, mine was, on a, mine was on a Saturday. Um, well, I first started... Uh, 1st Battalion, Bravo Company, uh, Platoon 1004. Um, went there, you know, Black Friday. Your, uh, your drill instructors pretty much introduced themselves, you know, tell them what they're all about, you know. Um, then after that, they just destroy the house. I mean, flipping over racks, throwing mattresses everywhere, uh, making you run in and out outside, going to the pits. Uh, Doing a bunch of crazy stuff, dumping gain everywhere, having to clean it up. Uh, that's that's never any fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but pretty much after that whole week of just getting destroyed every day, you actually you actually start your process of training. I mean, you start marching to Chow. Uh, they teaching you all the basics of everything you're going to need to know. Uh, you start start having more respect for them. You know, the longer you get get through training and you, you start realizing, you know, what you're doing and stuff. Um, let's see here. My mind, my mind is going blank, so try, try to ask me some questions. So uh, he, he told me that you broke your foot. When, when exactly did you do that and how did you do that? All right. Um, so it was my, my right foot. It was my second metatarsal, and it was a, uh, it was a stress fracture. It was actually on, I believe, week six when you hike to the range. Yeah. And yep. like through the hike, like my foot has already has already been hurting for at least a week by this point, but nothing too serious where it bothered me. Yeah. Um but on the hike, it was that week was actually our longest hike up to that point. I, I believe it was like seven miles or something. Uh six miles maybe. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. but, so we're hiking to the range and you know, we're doing this whole reach touch and your cargo pocket, you know, all that good stuff. Yep. Like like every step is just is just getting more and more aggravating. And like I, I don't say anything about it because like in my whole my mind I'm like, man, I don't I don't wanna get dropped, I don't wanna get recycled, you know. Yeah. I have to have to graduate at a later time, which ended up happening anyway. But so we're hiking there and it's just it's just killing me. So at the end of the hike, you know, I, I, I do finish the hike, which freaking blew, but it's whatever. Um, <laughs> so, so we get back, and we get to the range, 
And that's when all the fun begins, because you got you got to set up the house, which is, which is a bummer. And so the, the TTs come, and, you know, we're setting up the house, um, taking all our uh, – our salt packs out the uh, the TT, um, our sea bags and stuff, you know, and like the yep. whole time I'm just like moving stuff. I'm I'm holding it and limping every step of the way, and like my drill instructor see me, and uh, it's actually my senior drill instructor. He pulls me to the side and he's like, "Hey man, you all right?" He doesn't say it like that, but it's like everything everything going good. And I was like, you know, my foot hurts and I'm whipping around. I don't, I don't really think it's anything, uh, but he was like, he was like, "All right, well we have a." Um, we have a hygiene inspection, you know, in a few uh, by the company commander. So, yeah. uh, it's like, you know, you might want to might want to talk to him and, you know, see see if you can go see the corpsman or go to the BAS, the battalion aid station. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so I, I kind of just waited out a little bit. He sees that I'm limping and stuff. And, you know, it's not their job to it's not their job to break you physically, even though it may seem like that sometimes. So he kind of. Puts me on light duty unofficially. Sure. And so I'm standing on line during the hygiene inspection. And, you know, you got to put your hands over your head and, like, turn around. You mm-hmm. know, all that good stuff. And your whitey tatties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and when, so, like, I go to turn around. And after you turn around, you got to pick your feet up. And I want to go pick my, my left foot up. And since it's on my right foot, I couldn't bear pressure on it. So I, like collapsed almost yeah it was more like it, i guess it would look like if your knee gave out you kind of just like stumble a little bit oh okay yeah i had to grab onto my rack and stuff and so he was like you know what's going on with your foot and i was like well for about two weeks now it's been hurting and but after the hike it's just it's just been hurting really bad and it, it didn't really look bad it was just it's just a tad bit swollen and like a, a little bit of irritation i guess like a little bluish color looking around my toe. And he was like, well, you're definitely going to see the corpsman. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, that's a bummer. You know, so I have to get my medical chit and all that. So about an hour goes by, I end up at the um, the battalion aid station over there by 1st Battalion. Yep. And they're like squeezing it and all this kind of stuff and asking me, like, where's it hurt? You know, turn your foot this way, that way. And they're like, well... We're going to send you up to the, um, the hospital and, you know, get some x-rays on it and stuff. And I'm, I'm just, in my head, I'm just like, man, this sucks. Uh, but I end up getting get some x-rays on it. And the uh, it was a Navy it was a Navy lady. I can't remember her name. It was like Lieutenant, Lieutenant Briggs or something. I can't remember. Um, she she looks at my foot, you know, right after it gets x-rayed. And... She's uh she's looking at it and she doesn't say anything's wrong with it you know I might have just like sprained my toe or something stupid, uh but they end up putting me on crutches and putting me on light duty, so okay that that whole weekend I'm just on crutches just crutching around, <laughs> uh you know having to go tick tick every time I I crutch, um getting my <laughs> crutches thrown around by the drill instructors and of course they call me a, a weak bitch and shit you know, um. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I, I go that whole weekend, and then I have another appointment that Monday, and I, I, don't, I didn't even know I had this appointment. And we're sitting in the the little hooches or whatever on the range, getting our classes by our PMIs, and all of a sudden my my senior drill instructor walks up behind and pulls me out. He's like, you know, grab your grab your rifle, grab your salt pack, and you know, crutch over there to the safety vet. And get to the safety vic. I, I put my stuff in the back, and uh, I hop in the front seat. And he's like, he's like, man, I hate to I hate to tell you this. And like at this point, he's actually talking to me like a real person. He's yeah. Like, man, I hate to tell you this, but your foot's broken. I'm gonna have to drop you. Like it didn't it didn't really set in until like. So like he was like, actually like serious about. It. You could tell like, like damn, he really didn't want to tell me how he told me, but he was just so straightforward about it. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not even gonna try to be like tough about it. I mean, I was crying. I was like, man, this sucks. Like, you know, I started off as a squad leader, and now I'm getting dropped. You know, I was like, I was like an A1 student pretty much. Yeah, no one and, wants to get dropped. That shit sucks. Yeah, man, it, it blew. Uh, so this process, let me let me explain this a little bit. Um, so he takes me up there. 
through the BAS, and I'm, I see, I'm seeing the same Navy lady, uh, the Lieutenant Briggs, I believe her name is. Um, and she actually tells me this time, she's like, oh, we didn't catch it the first time, but I had some more, some more corpsmen come in and look at it, and we all decided that you have a stress fracture. And it hit me even harder that, that she told me that instead of my senior drill instructor. Mm -hmm. And so I just started bawling right there in, in the, uh, the back where the, the tables are. I'm just sitting there crying. I mean, it sucks. Uh, and then I have to put this lame boot on, and I'm still walking around on crutches. I'm hating every bit of it. And Absolutely. I end up getting dropped that day. You know, my senior drill instructor, he goes and grabs all my stuff and brings it back for me, which is, which is pretty cool. But, yeah, um, that was nice of him. Yeah. Uh, so after, after I got all my stuff, um, had this, had this uh, staff sergeant come, and, you know, I had to get all my stuff inventoried, you know, of course, mm -hmm. accountability. <laughs> yeah, um, always. And then I got taken to, uh, <clears throat> to the medical rehabilitation platoon, uh, MRP slash PCP, whatever. Um, so I'm getting there, and then, of course, got to get inventory again as soon as I get there, even though I got inventory five minutes ago. <laughs> so, getting there, and I'm sitting there just waiting, 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 waiting. And then uh, I believe it was another staff sergeant, which was uh, Staff Sergeant Rogers. He was the senior drill instructor at the time of uh, MRP. So he oh, takes okay. me back there, um, tells me to find a rack, and... I get inventory as soon as I get to to the uh, to the platoon by is a I believe it was the scribe of the the platoon. Um, so anyway, get all that done, um, and then I'm just all you do in the the MRP platoon is literally just sit on your foot lockers all day long, reading knowledge. That's it. Oh um, God, it <laughs> sucks so bad, dude. And like every now and then they'll like whatever phase you're in, mm -hmm. they'll come and give you that, that test to take. Like you might take uh, your your first initial testing or if you're in like second or third phase, then you'll take in, uh, final testing or uh, oh, okay. uh which which it ended up helping me out in my favor because I aced final testing and prac app. <laughs> well, so I don't, I don't hate them too bad. It just, it just sucked at the time. But um, Yeah, I mean, of, like that knowledge is, is kind of interesting the first time. You know, oh, when, you're, yeah. when you're looking through it, but fuck, having to sit you're there for... to read it all day long, every day, <laughs> this, this same stuff. Yeah, um, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, so uh, anyway, while I was in MRP, every two weeks I had to go to the to the doctor. Um, you know, they was asking me, what's your pain level, 0 to 10? Uh, and they would, like, move it around, keep feeling it, asking if it was tender, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, every... Every um, Monday and Wednesday, I had reconditioning where I got to go to the gym and do these little foot exercises. And after I got done with that, then I could work out until I got to get there at 7 and I had to leave at 8.30. Um, so I got to work out a little bit while I was in MRP. Oh, so they let um, you do, you know, like lift weights and that kind of thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they recommend not uh, lifting weights. Like, say, if I had a a lower body injury, they wouldn't want me to do squats or, you know, leg sure. presses or anything like that. But, you know, they highly encourage doing upper body workouts. And yeah, vice versa, pull -ups like if you and broke stuff. your wrist or something, then, you know, do lower body exercises. Um, but besides MRP, there are, there are uh, four more other platoons you can go to. Uh, MRP is pretty much just after you get hurt, you're just waiting to go to PCP which is uh, the physical conditioning platoon where they're getting your body used to the, to the stress again, uh, and you have to run an exit. Uh, so whatever phase you're in, you run that exit. Like you might run an IST or you might run a full PFT. Uh, but oh, most okay. of the time you're, you're only in um, PCP for about two weeks because you do two weeks of um, uh, PT. Um, all right, well, okay. besides PCP, there's also PEB, which is – Pretty much the worst one to be in, uh, sort of. Sort of. Well, while you're there, you're technically an honorary Marine because if you end up in PEB, you're going to be there for six, seven months before you even go back to training. That's for people who, like, 
had like open fractures and stuff. Sure. Like, crazy, crazy injuries. Like, like people falling like head first off the dirty main on the uh, confidence course and stuff. Mm-hmm. Or, or sliding down the rope on the A frame and like breaking your knee. Um, so I would say that was the worst one to go to. Yeah. But, but while you're there, you know, you're an automatic Marine, you get your high insight and you get to play Xbox like the whole day you're there. You get your phones and stuff, which I guess kind of makes sense since you're going to be there, you know, half a year before you can go back to training. Yeah. Before um, you can actually finish boot camp. Yeah. I and mean, then the, um, the last one would be, or there's two more actually, uh, EHP, which is evaluation holding platoon where people who have like fraudulent enlistments or like heart conditions or you know, anything oh. that keeps you from training, you you end up there uh, and they're pretty much just like evaluating you to see if you're fit to go back to training or if you need to get uh, discharged. Yeah. Um, there's also RSP, which is recruit separation, where everybody that's there that's going home goes to that platoon and they get sent home. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, and then the um, the last one would be uh, BMP, which is the Basic Marine Platoon, and that's for people who get hurt on like the Crucible and stuff, but still still make their their time mark to uh, to become Marines. Which I think you only have to do 36 hours out of 54 on the Crucible, and you know you've pretty much made it. You don't have to hike back or anything, but oh, know, I didn't know that. Um, okay. And those, those who go to BMP still get the still get the graduate. I mean, they might have to sit in the stands and watch, you know, their company graduate, but uh, but they still they still get their boot leave and stuff. But they mm-hmm. have to come back to the island, and you know, yeah, they have to stay there until they're 100% clear to go to uh, MCT or ITB or you know whatever wherever they're going. Oh, okay, um, that would suck to have to come back. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, you're like, yeah, I'm getting off the island, and then you get orders to, to go back, and you're just like, fuck. They're like, shit, I'm only going to be gone 10 days? Crap. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they, they got it easy. They get liberty every day, and, mm-hmm. you know, while they're there, you know, their money's just stacking up because they don't have to buy food or anything. I mean, they don't have any bills um, besides, like, if they have their phone because you get to keep your phone while you're there. And, you know, they get Xboxes and PS4s, and they get the goods. Um, well, I mean, good for them. It makes sense, you know, because if they're Marines at that point, they just kind of got shafted and got hurt at the end. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, two of my buddies from um, the platoon I picked up with, Yeah. Uh, two two people that I knew in MRP ended up picking up with that same platoon during um, team week. Uh, I picked back up in grass week. I mm-hmm. picked up with, uh, with uh, 1st Battalion Delta Company, platoon 1016, which we ended up – they ended up winning um, – Initial initial drill, uh, then they ended up coming second for like everything else besides um, final drill. They won final drill, which I was there for that, and we got the uh, honor platoon. So oh yeah, nice, dropped, good for you guys. Yeah, dropped and then got picked up with the honor platoon. So I guess I can't be too mad. <laughs> and ended up meeting some some really cool cats in uh, that platoon. Man, they were they were hardcore. Uh, they definitely call it Dirty Delta for a reason. I won't go into specifics, though. <laughs> uh, um, That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But, so you uh, said you were there for you said you were there for eight weeks. Uh, yeah, I was in uh, I was in MRP for for seven weeks, and then I was in PCP for one week, and then went back to training. Okay. Okay. So I take it you first, did you have to pass uh, the IST or P or uh, PFT? I had to do a, I had to do a full PFT. Did you? Okay. Yeah. It was, it was like my slowest PFT ever, though. I, I ran it in, like, 22 minutes. Well, and it makes sense. You know, you just spent the last two months, more or less, sitting around doing yeah, nothing. Um, so during, uh, during MRP, they actually had this thing called the Alter G, which is a anti-gravity treadmill where you're, like, you're sitting in this bubble and you run with, like, no body weight. It's, it's pretty cool. I can't really explain it to you, but that's the That's kind of crazy. Part. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird the first time I got on. It felt like I was a spaceman or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just floating or something. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty much just like, just like, barely touching the ground and you're just like bouncing up and down like every step. It's like, you you just strap in around the waist and then, uh, you so just you're just running with, uh, no resistance. It's pretty cool. Interesting. Um, I'll have to yeah, look that uh, up. That's kind of cool. 
Oh yeah. Um, so I picked up back on. I uh, actually went back uh, four days in training when I picked up. So oh, okay. I picked up. On, I got dropped uh, that Monday of grass week, which is training day 30, and picked up before grass week on training day 26. So mm, I had to go okay. through four days. Uh, to get back first, to grass week, the beginning of grass week. Yeah, which which blew. Because that first day I got back, I just got slayed by the drill instructor. <laughs> it was just me and him for like two hours, and he had to inventory me. So he had to pretty much just break me into the platoon, you know. <laughs> I respect because he ended up he ended up being uh, the drill instructor because I got meritoriously promoted. Um, nice, so congratulations. Him, thanks. Uh, I, I ended up making him the drill instructor that had to pin my chevrons on, which is which was pretty cool. Hell he yeah. Ended up being, uh, one of my um, favorite drill instructors. He was a uh, staff sergeant. Um, I had uh, I had like the highest highest enlisted um, drill instructors, and I had a gunnery sergeant for my senior drill instructor, and three staff sergeants for my, you know, my first, second, and third, mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, all mine were were sergeants. I ended up having five during my time there, and they were all sergeants. Oh yeah, we ended up with the uh, a fifth one, but he was only there for a week. He was, uh, he was still in a uh, drill instructor school. School, so just, yeah. Like, by this point, it was, like, team week when we picked him up. So, like, nobody really gave a shit what he said technically. But, you know, we still <laughs> had to listen to him. He was yeah. so <laughs> man. Just running around saying, recruit, recruit, scream back at me, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, anyway, those, fresh, guess, those fresh drill instructors are always funny because – you could tell they don't have a ton of experience, and so they don't really know yeah, what to say or do. Just like screaming out, just at no one, basically, just <laughs> crazy. Well, it was but, funny because um, I find too that, like you said, with the that staff sergeant who was rough on you when you first got there, I found with mine too the ones that were more difficult and were like tougher on you ended up being the ones that people ended up liking the most. Yeah. You know, for that's whatever that reason, that's just how it worked out. Yeah, she was uh. After um after we had our Warriors breakfast and stuff, man, he ended up being like the funniest guy I've ever met in my life. He was hilarious, <laughs> and um, it was actually uh his um his real MOS is a uh is fire crash rescue, so he told us a little bit about oh, cool. that. I won't go into specifics, you know, because that's a that's a drill instructor to recruit or sure. new Marine type type deal. So he, he told us not to talk about that. Yeah, that's um, fine. What uh, would you say? Obviously, probably being in the, you know, the rehabilitation was probably the worst part of boot camp, kind of in general. But what would you say was the the most fun or like the part you liked the most? Uh, I would say the thing I liked the most. Let's see. I I'll probably have to think about it for a minute. Um, probably probably the crucible was probably the funnest mm -hmm. and the most physically exhausting. Um. Not it weren't really mentally tough because you know your drill instructors aren't really yelling at you at this point. Yeah. They're just kind of guiding you what to do. You know, go, you know, go lay in that ant hill or something stupid. You know, they might do that, but they didn't. They didn't really say that for the record. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I'll I'll touch down a little bit on on that. I'm gonna try to go in like chronological order. Yeah. Uh, so I started. I picked up back on train day 26. Uh, so I had, to, I had to go through a couple of days before we had to hike back to the range, uh, which weren't too bad. Um, it, it weren't it weren't it weren't that bad. Uh, you know we had to we had to pack our gear and all that. That was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we hiked to the range. It was easy peasy. I was a little bit scared though because that was the hike that took me out. So yeah. I, I walked I walked light. <laughs> not not I didn't pack light. I just. Just walked lighter on my foot. We're just yeah, full, absolutely. Well, it's different yeah. because in uh, in Camp Pendleton, where I did, where the West Coast guys do their, you know, the the field training, um, the range is literally like a quarter mile from from the barracks, and so I mean. Oh yeah, ours is um ours is literally like you could probably throw a rock and hit it, but they just take you all around and. Did they? Okay. Like circles and. Just over and over. You're like, I can see the range. Let's just go shoot something. <laughs> yeah. It's like they, they take you everywhere. They take you through, like, the, the day, the day nav mm -hmm. courses and all, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, 
Which, which everybody might not do that. I don't know, but that's that's just how it was for us. Sure. Um, but anyway, you know, we got there. We set up the house. Uh, you know, uh, at well, where we were at, we had the um, the barracks or the squad bays, and then about a hundred a hundred yards away, there were some buses, and like every time, every time we'd go inside, and before we got like something out of the TT, we had to like run and go touch the buses. And, mm -hmm. then, and then freaking grab the item, whatever it was, and bring it back inside. And I'll tell you, I probably run, ran through the buses at least a thousand times <laughs> in two weeks. Because we, we stayed at the range for two weeks um, during grass week and then firing week. Um, uh, grass week, um, see, you're pretty much just staying in positions for hours at a time and yep. then you switch and do another position for hours uh which you're you're standing sitting kneeling and prone um and the sand fleas are just eating you alive mm -hmm. it freaking sucks but you know the the more stress you put your body through you know during firing week when you do that position it'll just it'll just be a breeze so i highly recommend it not not gaffing off any position or anything your pmis are telling you because they're legit. All of those guys are infantry guys, so they they know what it's like to to do those positions and mm -hmm. the shit. Um, yep. Anyway, grass week really is not that tough. Uh, you do you do a bunch of running around, like you turn left now and all that reverse formation, mm -hmm. all kinds of dumb crap. You do it like all day long, and especially if you make a head call, like the heads are only like like spitting distance but it'd take you like 20 minutes to get there because you're just running around <laughs> trying to get there um it's, it's ridiculous but looking back at it it's not that bad it's just doing it it sucks because you got your salt packs on and you're holding your rifle and it's, yeah and you're just tired part. and you know it's yeah i feel like you're like fuck this is dumb <laughs> feel like you got shin splints all week just because you're just running around yep um, especially when you go down range you're just you just route step marching and just reach touch, reach touch, reach touch the whole way there. The whole way. All the way to one. Yeah, it, it, it freaking blew, man. Um, but fire weed, they don't, they don't really mess with you that much. Um, yeah, they want you to be somewhat stress-free during that so you can... The, the only time you really you really get fucked with is um, like in the mornings before the PMIs get there. You're just running around a little bit. You got you got to stage your gear. Then you gotta pick it up, then you gotta stage it, then you gotta pick it up, then stage it. Um, then you gotta pretty much jog all the way down range to the pit, which is freaking 500 yards. Um, yeah, it's a long way. <laughs> that's pretty much it during the day uh, when, you're, when your coaches and your PMIs and your blocks and stuff get there. You know, you don't, you don't even see your drill instructors. Uh, yeah, not really. You know, you, they, they're my, like your senior drill instructor is like the only one that's like around, allowed to walk around. And I think your heavy can also walk around. But uh, mm -hmm. like your knowledge and your kill hat, they, they just stay back and then enjoy their time away from recruits. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little break for them. They have a firing week. Uh, let's see. So you're, you're just shooting. You uh, start off, you do your 100-yard your, um, your confirmation uh, like the first day you get there so you can – you can zero your RCO. Yep. Um, then you do your 200, your uh, 300, and your 500. Uh, your able target, your dog target, and your your B mod. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. You know all your different positions. I can't I can't even remember which position you did which yard line, but you do them. Anyway, uh, the pits. Pits aren't that bad. The, the drone shutters don't do anything because they're just there to verify, you know, shots and stuff if you can't. Yeah. If you can't tell what they are. So you call a verifier over. Um, so he can tell you, oh, there's only eight shots and there's supposed to be ten. You know, he verifies it and you write it down on your scorecard that eight shots were only hit the target, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Then after that, uh, after grass weekend, firing week you go you hike back well not not every company hikes back but uh we hiked back and then it's uh then it's team week believe it yeah i believe it's team week 
And all team week is is just going around on the base. Uh, so like I went to the McMap field uh, the, the first two days. Oh, nice, cool. And you know I just I just like rake rake the the mulch and stuff after they got done doing McMap. I just raked it and made it all even and stuff and like raked all the leaves up and all that crap. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, but, af but after that, I ended up volunteering to be in a to be an armory recruit, where all I did for the rest of the week was just clean all the rifles and make them like like you just bought them, like make them look real nice. Um, you uh, you have a uh, that's what uh, at the end of that week, I believe you have your um your battalion command, no, your company commander inspection that week. That that Saturday or something I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're just you're just getting everything as clean as possible. You know you're repainting the lines, uh, you're painting the the stanchions, the bulkheads, uh, you're polishing all the metal, uh, you're cleaning all the windows. Oh yeah. You're you're shutting down the head and like going to a different company to use the heads. Um. Which uh fire week um my bad team week. Is this pretty much just a big break after, after grass and firing week? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much just slow down, uh, and you know you you're just like marching yourselves around in the details and stuff. Uh, you're a unit leader and then nine other recruits. Um, my mind's going blank, man. <laughs> no, that's cool. I mean, you covered quite a bit. Um, how was? Graduation for you. Oh, uh, graduation. Do, you, first, do they still do um, like family day the day before and then graduation? Yeah, or? we have family day the day before. Um, well, I'll tell you, graduation itself was just exhilarating, man. It was, it was something else. Standing out on the parade deck, just like you're not moving, but your eyes are just scanning the crowds and like. You're just secretly smiling inside because you know you're about to go home in about like an hour. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 literally, it's really something else, man. It's, it's amazing. I, I cannot even explain it to you, man. You just, you just have to be there. You have to experience it for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I've tried, you know, on the channel to explain it, but it is tough to really get the, like, the full feeling behind it. Yeah. You know, if that makes sense to where it feels adequate because – you're right. It is. You're just. It's just one of those things. You're like, man, been here for you know however long. I'm finally gonna get to go home here and uh, you know and hold on and uh, get to finally leave here in the next little bit. That's gonna be freaking awesome. Yes. Uh, let me, if I if I had uh, tried to explain it to somebody who hasn't graduated boot camp, I would say take take graduating high school or college and then. Just times that by infinity. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. That's that feeling, I guess. Um, but now, but I, I, I can't. I don't know what what felt better, graduation or the Eagle Globe and Anchor ceremony. Yeah. Because I was crying during the Eagle Globe and Anchor ceremony, especially my. I was in the first or the the second, the second rank because we was in open ranks, and I was in the second rank, mm -hmm. the second family, um, and. My senior drill instructor done, uh, done the first two ranks, and all the other drill instructors done the rest. Uh, but my senior drill instructor put my Eagle Globe and Anchor in my left hand, and he shook my right, and that was just something else, man. The first time you shake hands and he says, you know, good job, Marine, and instead of calling you, you know, a piece of trash recruit, and it just, it just hits you. It's just in the glory days, man. It's, it's awesome. Hell yeah. Did they, did they do that for you on family day? Or was that at the end of the uh, crucible? They actually, uh, literally right after the hike from the crucible, the nine miles back, literally right after that, you go, you go to the house and you set all your stuff down and then, you know, march right back to, we did ours right in front of the, the parade deck in this uh, grassy area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they gave us the whole little speech, you know, whatever. I don't even, I don't even remember. I was... I was pretty much just high the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I don't really remember. I was just standing there. And, you know, I got the Eagle Goldman Anchor put in my hand, and I was I was crying. I ain't even going to lie. I, was, I, was, I couldn't even hardly talk to my senior drill instructor. It was, it was that bad, man. Was, <laughs> I, I told myself the whole time I weren't going to cry, but 
I, I couldn't help it after he put it in my hand, especially after being, you know, on on base for freaking five and a half months. It was it was something else, man. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, see, for me, they we didn't get our eagle living anchors until family day, and because I was under the impression we were supposed to get it at the end of the crucible, like you did, but they, for some reason, had changed it there for a while. And so we did the crucible, and then we went and had the warriors' breakfast and that whole thing. And we, then we had to wait like a whole other month until we got our eel lemon anchor. Because we, oh man, the warriors' breakfast. Mm -hmm. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna tell them what the the warriors' breakfast is all about. But once you get there, you you'll just know how great that is too. Oh hell yeah, uh, that was the best part. Don't start being there with you. I won't go into it too specifics, but they're there with you. And it's it's a good time. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Well, uh, let's talk about the crucible. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So you hike there. You know, for us, it was like a six mile hike there. They wanted to get the, us there quick. Um, but when we got there, it was immediately another three mile hike from uh, Page Field to uh, to the range. Uh, so we went there, and we did. I, I, it was the, it was the event six. I don't I don't know the name if it had a name, but it's pretty much you you uh you do squad movements mm -hmm. like through the woods, and then uh, you get to this little to this little range, and you gotta take some shots, and then you go through the woods again. But this time they're giving you like casualties and stuff, so you gotta figure out how to get you know people out of the woods and like still still move in like an orderly fashion and your senior drone instructor is just dropping people say if you have if you have 10 people you might end up with like six casualties so you got four people trying to drag six people out so it's insane um and i mean they're not all like dead casualties one might have like a missing leg the other one might be dead i don't, I don't know it's mm -hmm. different different ones uh when he says it, then you have to assess the casualty. You know, look up, look down, left or right, buddy, buddy, are you okay? Um, that, that was a, uh, I don't want to see bad, but, and, you know, after that event, you got uh, three miles back. I won't, I won't try to go into too many specifics about the Crucible because one of them things you have to experience. Um, yeah, it really is. Uh, I'll tell you, both, both days were like 30 freaking... 30 degrees and it sucked so bad especially when we did the uh the combat endurance course when we first got there so we're just crawling through water and it's 30 degrees outside and i ended up being soaked the whole time through the crucible except on the hike back and it just it just sucks and especially i had fire watch and so i had to wake up on fire watch in the middle of the night and put on cold camis cold wet camis and is, you know, patrol around it. That sucked too. Um, <laughs> yeah. But the second day ended up being worse because it was raining for like the first like five hours, and it was just a it was just a horrible time. Uh, can't I can't really explain it to you. It was just horrible. Um, yep. <laughs> it's one of the things you have uh, to suck up and get done. Yeah, uh, we ended up. Uh, the chief drill instructor actually made all the drill instructors take their um, take their uh, their sticks and put them in some uh, the hot boxes, which is just like a small little room with a heater in it because the uh, the risk of hypothermia was just outrageous. Like yeah. kids were just getting dropped left and right for like pneumonia, hypothermia, freaking. I think like one kid had like frostbite on his fingertips or something. <laughs> it was crazy, man. But we we st we stayed warm because we ran everywhere. <laughs> so like, yeah, that'll always work, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially like. Oh uh, man, let me tell you the worst. All right, so we're we're hiking down, hiking down this road. It's a it's a thousand meter road, and it's nothing but like trees and water on each side of the road. Okay. And so we're like semi dry by this point. And so we're, we're patrolling, and uh, you know we we're in a, uh, a tactical column. Okay. And like, all of a sudden, 
the, my drone or my senior drone instructor was the was the drone instructor that walked around with us because you know every every uh group or whatever every team has a different drone instructor yeah mine ended up being my senior drone instructor which was like the freaking most rock solid dude i've ever met and he was tough um so he'd be like contact left so everybody would have to run to the left and just like dive into the water and then he'd be like all clear and then you know you get back in your tactical column and then like you get three steps in and he'd be like contact right so everybody would run to all the way across the right side of the road and then dive into the water again and then you know he'd like frag out so then everybody would jump you know outboard and you know whatever that that sucked because we did that every like five steps down a thousand meter uh dirt road <laughs> it was horrible and then then after that there was a little obstacle course or whatever at the end of that and then we had a sprint all the way down the freaking thousand meter road and then get a uh uh, get our squad and get our accountability and all that. Mm -hmm. And then we did whatever else the Crucible had to offer. <laughs> yeah, that's a tiring, uh, technically 2,000 meters there, huh? Yeah, dude, it sucks so bad. But, like, the whole time I was just thinking, I was like, man, been here for five and a half months. There's no way I'm letting a little bit of running and a little bit of cold and being wet stop me from what I'm getting. Like, tomorrow morning at like six o'clock and that's when i got the eagle Goban anchor put in my hand and mm -hmm. that was something else man. oh yeah uh, especially you spent so long in the you know the medical platoon and you're you're like fuck man the only thing that's going to stop me is me collapsing because i have a heart attack yeah uh, literally like i would have like broke my knee and just like have my buddy drag me or something man uh yeah it's like i'm, I'm finishing this thing one way or another yeah. I don't. I don't care. I was. I was getting through it one way or another. Actually, um, actually had not a knee injury, but I, like my knee was just hurting really bad mm -hmm. for for some reason. I don't, I don't know what it was, but thankfully it stopped. Uh, actually stopped hurting like a couple of days ago. So yeah, I mean, oh, I've been it? on it for a while. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, so. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you got like any specific questions or anything? I know I've just been just talking. <laughs> I mean, not a not a ton specifically offhand. I think it would be cool um, once you complete your MOS school. Yeah, you know, because you're gonna obviously go to MCT and then you'll go to. Do you know where your MOS school is? Did they tell you? Um, I believe I was told it's going to be at Fort Lee in Virginia. I think that's what I heard. That sounds right. I remember talking with this to our, our ammo techs, but it would be really cool if once you um, get done with that and they've sent you to whatever duty station you're going to go to that uh, we can do this again and you can talk about that yeah, MOS because yeah, I've had sure. people ask about it, but I don't really know a whole ton, you know, of the yeah, specifics man. of it. I'll definitely hook you up, man. Yeah, that would be awesome, but, I mean, I can't really think of any other questions unless, you know, the main thing is it's cool to learn about the the you know the medical re rehabilitation platoon and kind of all the other platoons because I didn't realize that there was you know what four or five of them. Yeah, there's a there's, there's a few. Yeah, and um, you just you know you don't hear about that unless you have to go through yeah, it. If, er, yeah, I don't. I didn't even know about it honestly until I got dropped. I'm like, man, what the, the fuck is MRP? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why am I here? I could have just stayed on light duty for a week because. Like, I mean, all that first week was was snapping in. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I probably wouldn't have made the hike back or nothing, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, snapping in's not overly tough, especially on your feet, you know, because yeah. you're crouched and stuff most of the time, or kneeling and sitting and stuff most of the time, so. Yeah, yeah I actually had really bad stress fractures in both feet when I was in, but I um, did everything I could to hide, you know, my limping that I was doing. And yeah. my kill hat actually noticed towards the right, right before we were about to start the crucible. And, and he's like, he pulled me aside and he's like, are you good? I'm like, I was like, you know, yes, sir. Or, you know, I, I, or whatever I said. And, and he's like, okay. He's like, if I see you limping though, I'm dropping you. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> okay. Actually, uh, my senior drone instructor actually looked out for me because, uh, all the, um, all the, all the injuries, 
like all the recruits that have been injured and yeah. got picked up before the crucible they're supposed to get a pre-crucible screen and like i was supposed to go but some way somehow my senior drone started to look out for me and you know hook me up however he did i don't know but yeah it sounds like he was a cool dude yeah, he ended up he ended up being a solid dude man he was, he was tight well that's good um, what else uh I'm trying to think of what else i could tell you about the uh, mrp uh pretty much mrp man you're just you're just going to the doctor's appointments you're doing you're doing your recovery stuff mm -hmm. um you know like physical therapy reconditioning had uh had this thing that was called wets where i have to go uh tuesday and thursday i'd have to go to the pool and uh swim for like an hour or something stupid with a uh with floaties on which is whack <laughs> So I, I really did not want to go. I, I felt like a little punk doing it, man. Um, well, it is good like, cardio. Yeah, it was. That's what it's actually for is uh, cardio. So I mean, we couldn't run at this point, you know. Besides getting on the uh, the alter G, the anti gravity treadmill. Yeah. Um, that's, that's pretty much it about MRP. Uh, sitting on your foot locker. You know, whatever. Reading that uh, knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> what tell you this, you do meet some some pretty cool dudes in there. Um, I met this one dude. Uh, I don't I don't know his rank, but and I'll, I'll just say recruit Malili. Um, he ended up being a really really solid dude. He graduated uh, with golf company. Okay. Um, uh, I met I met a lot of people, man. Like when I went back to training, we'd all see each other at uh, church, and it'd just be a, it'd just be a good time, man. It'd be a great time. Yeah, like mini reunions every week. <laughs> yeah, every, every Sunday, man, it was pretty much just getting the gang back together. <laughs> That's cool. But I do, I do commend him though. He was, uh, he was actually in uh, in training for like like 200 days. He actually he had a he had to get a waiver, a 180 day waiver, so he could stay in training and complete training, which is pretty pretty tough to get because they look at your uh, they look at your McTims which is like your recruit record mm -hmm. that ends up following you, you know, wherever you go. Um, it's like what your drill instructors write about you. Yeah. Cause they, they do, like, they take notes on you and stuff and say, if, oh, if he's a shit recruit or if he's a, if he's a good recruit, uh, if he was a squad leader, he was a guy, you know, whatever. If he was a fucking GP. Yeah. Um, and I imagine you yeah, had to take uh, all they, that into they account. Take all that in, into consideration and stuff and, uh, well, good on him, man. Back. Huh? I said good on him. You know, a lot of people have a hard time doing yeah, he, that for uh, so he long. He got dropped twice. He was uh, he started off in uh, I think India Company, third battalion, and I think he got dropped and picked up with Lima Company, third battalion, and then got dropped and then picked up with Golf Company, second battalion, and graduated with them. <sighs> I really, I really commend that dude. Uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of dudes, a lot of cool dudes get sent home. Uh, I knew this one dude. His name was Guy, and he needed one of those 180 day waivers. And he was like one of the coolest dudes I've ever met. But he got he ended up getting sent home, which which kind of sucks. And you know some some other people here and there don't really touch down on that too much. But yeah, that would be rough, man. When especially if you want to stay, but they just they're not going to waive you. You know, he for whatever had, reason. He had more willpower than like anybody I've ever met in training. It was it was like I was sad for him when I seen him leave. Yeah. It sucked. Yeah, that'd be terrible. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, he also got dropped twice too. So and he still he was still like a fresh recruit, man. He was like first day on the island, he still had that the audacity to want to finish training. You no, know, he was he was he was headstrong about it. Well, good for him. That'll That'll uh, do him well, you know, down the road, you know, with whatever yeah, think, he ends um, up pursuing. I think uh, he he got this uh, this offer like if uh, to wait six months and to be completely healed, and then he'll do a, a do a medical screening and then be able to come back to training. Oh, okay. Well, good. Hopefully, he takes that then. Yeah, oh, he probably he probably will. He's a he's a tough kid. Well, good. Um, well, I mean, hell, we've already been at this for an hour. 
Damn. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like it at all. I feel like it just got started. I know, right? I've done covered pretty much everything. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you guys have specific questions, by all means, ask them, you know, down in the comments, and, and he can answer you. And then, and yeah, I'd love to have you back for when uh, you're done with, with your MOS school. Hell yeah, dude, definitely. I'll definitely drop by. I mean, I watch, I watch your channel often, so. Good, I appreciate that. But yeah. Especially since you actually were a lot of people too, which is not most YouTubers do. I mean, they might say they do, but just put something in the comments like, yeah, I just answered everybody's question. But like, well, you know, didn't answer mine specifically, you know, whatever. Yeah, and I try to. It's tough sometimes. I mean, because at any one time on my um, Facebook page, I've got like 20 to 30 conversations going, depending on the day. Um, you got any like fan favorite questions? You know, questions that get asked a lot about boot camp. Um, I mean, more just kind of the you know the basic stuff, just the general what to expect sort of thing. You know, just because people are nervous about about going, they don't know if, you know how the general structures are going to be, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'll I'll try to cover that real quick. What to expect? Sure. Um, well, to expect some stuff from your drill instructors. Pretty much just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. And while doing that, just getting screamed at 24-7. Especially if you have first fire watch or last fire watch. <laughs> yeah. That's the word. I won't go, go into specifics on that. I'll have to let you, let you figure it out for yourselves if you're really serious <laughs> about joining. You know, can't, can't, can't give all the secrets away. <laughs> well, of course. Because, you know, I mean... If you give all the secrets away, then that would be what they expect, and everybody's experience is the same but different. Yeah, right. I had the same <clears throat> drill instructor or pick up in the same battalion or, you know, all that good stuff. So that also affects kind of how you get trained. Yeah, and I noticed that, too, that, you know, everyone more or less does the same thing, but everyone's perception of it, you know, is, yeah. is quite different depending on who you talk to. You can't, you can't really give a day-to-day a, a -day thing. I mean, every they do have a, an exact training schedule to follow that every company follows. But, you know, what happens during that day is so, like, you might get pictures. And who knows what might happen while you're getting pictures and mm -hmm. before you get pictures, after you get pictures, and, you know, how your child is. I just tell you, like, we got we got screamed at the whole chow, every chow, besides when, like, officers were there, then they were just kind of, like, standing. They would, like, walk up to you and whisper and be like, hurry up and eat, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's funny and how they can threaten you but not yell. <laughs> it is, like, whisper. Like, they'd get, like, two feet away from you and just be like, hurry up. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I said they didn't do that during Marine Week, though, which is pretty cool. We got the, our drill instructor, which are heavy, he marches there, like, every chow. Um, and then we would just march back by ourselves in details. And then pretty much all Marine Week was was just getting your uniforms and stuff ready for graduation. Um, you know, IP and everything, iron and everything. Mm -hmm. um, all that good stuff. Uh, packing all your stuff, taking your racks apart. Um, yeah, a lot of busy work. Yeah, it is. Marine week is supposed to be a chill week, which it kind of is. You're not getting yelled and screamed at, but, um, you know, it's, it's busy. You're just not working out. Yeah. Sort of say. <laughs> you know, a little bit of incentive training. Yeah, that, that never ends. <laughs> no, never. Never. Uh, I'll tell you one story specifically about, about some incentive training. Sure. Uh, so our senior drill instructor was uh, doing some graduation practice with us, and uh, I mean uh, not uh, graduation, um, final drill. And as uh, we're doing um, either column of twos or column of fives, and we were in a little school circle around the senior drill instructor, and uh, this kid, this kid Allen, he was just looking around, just just being dumb, and the senior drill instructor like looks like towards the direction he was looking, he was like, oh, we must be looking at the bird, huh, Alan? Go catch the bird. <laughs> and then he was like, he was like, drill instructor. And he called the kill hat over. 
And he was like, go help, go help out and find the bird. And we didn't see that kid for a while. <laughs> I think it was a couple hours. And he was gone. And uh, he ended up catching the bird, though. He got the Eagle Globe and Anchor put in his hand, so I'd say he caught the bird. Yeah, he did something right. <laughs> Might have been a little black zinc bird, but he caught it. <laughs> Might have oh. not caught that specific bird. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's funny the different games they can play, and they never uh, they never end. <laughs> well, I, can't, I can't explain everything. Uh, I did some some pretty dumb, some pretty dumb stuff while I was there. But looking back at it, you're just like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you this: at church, uh, if you go, you will learn this. Uh, the platoon who gets fucked up the most. Is the one who goes to uh, uh, church and tells everybody about how much they get fucked up, and they laugh about it. Mm -hmm. You'll know who that platoon is when you get there. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> usually, the, the ones who get fucked up the most are uh, the ones who end up winning, like the PFT and the CFT and stuff. Yeah, it's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess they call it getting stronger for a reason. Yep, it doesn't seem like it at the time, but you definitely. Uh... Yeah, I would say I would say that platoon was our platoon because we got first in the PFT and first in the CFT. Good. We yeah, we only had like like a handful of people not get a 300 on uh, the CFT, and all of our uh, every single person in our platoon was a first class PFT, like like 260 or higher. Like we was, no, it's we was not like bad. a couple. It was a couple of points right under the regimental record. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And we were, and we were for uh, for final drill. We were only half a point away from beating the regimental record in the final drill. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> half point. <laughs> half a point. So that means it's like, if somebody had their palm rolled back, we would have got a regimental record or something. Whatever. <laughs> but it weren't too bad. I mean, boot camp. Looking back on it. Well, I, let me put it like this. I don't think I would do it again, but there's certain certain events I would I would like to try again. Mhm. Mm you know, maybe we got the drone instructors yelling at me and you know whatever. But <laughs> yeah, it makes it slightly less fun. Like if you could do boot camp over without getting yelled at or getting it, I mean that would be fucking that'd be great. Yeah, I mean especially knowing what you know and you know knowing what oh, to yeah. expect. And you'll do a lot harder shit in the fleet and when you deploy and yeah. stuff. And so, and boot camp really will be the easiest time that you have in the Marine Corps. Especially if you deploy. The, everybody yelling at you and whatever, I mean. Yeah, I mean, that'll happen a bit, you know, in MCT and your MOS school and, and the fleet, you know, but not nearly to the extent of boot camp. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the whole reason they do it, though, is... To get you to get you used to it, so you know when it when it happens to you, it's just oh well, you know whatever. Mhm. Mm Ain't shit. Yeah, everything they do there is for a reason. Although you may not. Oh, yeah, it's, see it it's while you're there. Sharp. Well, uh, yeah, my wife's giving me the death glare. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her I said hey. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, sweet man, yeah, I will. Uh, I will. This will probably, I'll probably put it up tomorrow if everything goes right. well tonight. And then, uh, yeah, by all means, answer any questions, you know, if people ask them in the, in the comments. And then and then uh, just hit me up. Let me know once you're done with your MOS school, and we'll we'll do this again. All right, for sure, man. Uh, I'll hit you up at that time. Uh, might just see me leaning around your channel in you know, the comments or whatever here and there. Hey guys, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. All the links that you need to get in contact with me are down below. Uh, Facebook being the best one to contact me. It's, I'm on my phone all the time, so it's just easiest to, for me to be able to get back to you with your you know, variety of questions that you guys have. And, and yeah, if you need anything, by all means, hit me up. So please hit that subscribe button so you can keep in tune with future videos. And I'll see you later. Peace.